So here we go with acrylic pour attempt number two. You'll notice that I am working on canvases this time. I learned my lesson on acrylic pour number one. This time I wanted to try a jellyfish. I saw Gina DeLuca's video on this topic and I really wanted to give it a shot. Spoiler alert though, this is my second attempt. You'll see the first attempt at the end when I seal the canvas. I do both of them at once. Anyway, I started with a slightly blue tinted background, which I spread out with my handy dandy Dollar Tree pastry brush to make a nice even coat. Well, actually it's not super even. So I did a second coat and used a palette knife, which has a smooth edge and so makes a flatter finish. For this jellyfish, I'm using metallic Montmartre acrylic paint in purple and pink, thinned out with Floetrol. I actually used the over diluted acrylic paint that I originally mixed up for my first acrylic pour on the canvas boards. And I added acrylic paint to it to bring it to a thicker, less runny consistency. By the end of this pour, I learned that my mixture was still a little too thin because it spread a little more than I intended it to. But I like the result despite that, so I'm not mad at it. Also, the straw I used to blow out the shape of the jellyfish was way too big. I definitely do not recommend using bubble tea straws for this. Small diameter flexible tube is probably the much more ideal thing, since you can move it to different angles without worrying that a crease will stop the airflow entirely, and smaller diameter means that you don't have to use all of your lung capacity in one puff just to get the paint to move. But yeah, I added a little more pink and purple paint eventually and fiddled around with it with the straw until I got this shape. I really like the translucent ethereal effect it produced, which I think in part was thanks to how thin the paint was. I really need to experiment more with consistency until I come up with something more predictable, but still very thin and flowy. For the main under stem part, I looked it up and they're called oral arms. Oof. I used a string pull technique. This is a piece of thin linen cord that I used for card making. I uh, cut off a piece and set it on a little plate to contain the mess, covering different sections with pink and purple paint. Add it to the canvas carefully in a zigzag like pattern, hold your breath. And once you get over your anxiety that you're about to ruin everything, pull. It makes this super cool fluted effect, which you then repeat a couple times because you're excited the first one worked out so well. I tried going in the opposite direction once, but I did not like the effect at all, so I only did one before switching over to making the tentacles. This is done with a palette knife dipped in either pink or purple paint, pressing it into the canvas and drawing an arched line down. I was surprised how clear of a line it actually draws with the darker paint in the middle. I definitely expected this to fill back in with the thinner background color just because of how flowy the light blue was, but it didn't. Then finally I came back with my palette knife dipped in the background color and gently made a sort of scalloped pattern on the top of the jellyfish just to add a little more interest. And of course I had to try one more time with the straw to give it that sort of natural, imperfect, translucent effect. Before I turned the canvas back around and added some lines with the palette knife in that background color again, going up into the hood of the jellyfish. At least I think it's called the hood. A couple more tentacles, and then I stopped myself from playing with it anymore. And the next thing you'll see through the magic of editing is eight weeks in the future, once the paint is completely set. So these are the two jellyfish pictures I did. The blue and green one was my first off-camera attempt, so I could decide if it would even be possible for me to do this. It's quite a bit messier than the pink one, and not quite as ethereal and light looking. I used a lot more paint on it. You can see here that once it dried, since the paint was so thick, it actually started to crack, which I have heard can happen if your pour isn't thin enough. The pink one came out very nicely though. Again, it spread more than I really intended it to, but there was no visible cracking, and because of the subject matter, I actually really like the feathered edges of the hood. 
I still like the first one, which was done with the green and blue Monmart acrylic paints, by the way, the metallic ones, with the same background color as the pink one, though I did add a few spots of this khaki beige color just to break up the space a little and make it more interesting since I knew it was going to be sort of monochrome-ish. Here I'm just going to add a nice coat of Liquitex gloss varnish and spread it with a foam brush to avoid getting too many brush marks on the surface. Once it dries for a day, I'll sand it and add another coat to get it as smooth and thick as possible. But then, these are done! I hope you enjoyed this acrylic pour. Please like if you liked this video. And check out Gina DeLuca's video if you'd like to know more about this process. I'll link it in the iCard. Subscribe for more fun art things, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye!